I know you have many questions. What does Mac stands for? Define Mac. Where is this Mac present? How many can we have? Why is it used for? Is it permanent? Why Mac is required alongside with IP? Why not we make Ethernet understand IP? Why Mac works like it works? I'll answer all of these questions in this video. So let's start. In computer networks, we have two kind of addressing schemes: IP address and MAC address. In the today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the MAC address, also called as media access control. And trust me, it has nothing to do with Macintosh. The networking component inside your computer is called as network adapter or NIC, which stands for Network Interface Card. This device is responsible for all the network traffic that enters or leaves your system. Every NIC has assigned a unique MAC address while manufacturing and cannot be changed. It's always good to see an example. MAC addresses are a string of six groups, with each group contains two hexadecimal digits. First three groups are fixed for organizational identity, and last three groups are specific to your NIC. MAC addresses is 48-bit binary address. In this example, 00A0C9 indicates that the manufacturer is Intel. Your computer will have the MAC address for each of your network adapter. Why do we even need MAC address? Because NIC is the only network communication hardware in your computer and it only understands the MAC address. NIC knows nothing about an IP address. IP works on software end and MAC is embedded into the hardware. Back in time when networks were created so that computers communicate with each other, each computer was assigned a unique ID called as MAC address. So when some computers were connected in a network, each computer broadcasts a message to each computer in a network and says, Hey, I, I am going to build a MAC table with IPs of all the computers in this network. Ease my further communication and hence each system had all the MAC addresses of devices in the network. This is how Anik's PC communicate with Usman's PC. Anik's PC initiates a MAC frame. An IC of Vakas PC will drop the MAC frame because destination MAC does not match to its own MAC address. NIC of Usman's PC will accept the MAC frame because the destination MAC matched to its own MAC address. I know what you are thinking right now. How is it even possible to build a MAC table so big that it must contain entries for all the computing devices all over the world? Do I have to make a physical network connection to everyone around the world? Imagine. If in order to go to google.com you had to have the physical wire connecting your computer to California just to see their website. Now imagine you also need a physical wire to Seattle to connect to MSN. And if you need a physical wire to connect everywhere around the world, it would be very complex. Yeah, I know that. You have to deal with it. Now this is what's going to happen with you. Now let's move towards the solution. Now, consider these two networks in which B wants to communicate with E. Neither B have direct connection to E, nor B knows the MAC address of E. So how will they communicate? The only chance of communication for B to E is through C and D. But if we set the destination MAC of the message to MAC address of C, C will think that the message was created for him and will not send any further. So think about the solution for a second and then we'll continue. Okay, if you also think that IP address is the answer, then you are right. Let's see how. First of all, the IP address would be assigned to every computer in both of the networks. Then in the message header, we would add two new fields that would be source IP and the destination IP. Source IP would be the IP of B and the destination IP would be the IP of E, the end node to which we want to communicate. The source MAC address would be the MAC address of B and the destination MAC address would be the MAC address of first hop that is C in this case because we want to go through the C. 
as the destination mag was set to 3 c accepted this packet now c check the destination ip of this message and then finds out that this packet does not belongs to his own network so c passed this packet to d by changing the source mac address to his own and destination mac address to the mac address of c because single link communications would only be possible by using the mac address when d receives this packet it again checks the destination ip now d finds out that this ip belongs to his own network and by using the address resolution protocol it finds out the actual mac address of e and after finding out the mac address of e d passes on the packet to e by changing the source mac and destination mac address why because the link communication is only possible through mac address so this is how b would communicate with e there are special kind of devices which are able to communicate across the networks we call these devices as routers or gateway now let's get over this ip is responsible for end to end delivery of the message and mac is what gets the message from one hop to another ip to ip communication is really just a series of mac to mac communication taking place at each link Hopefully, now you know why computers need both MAC address and IP address. Why not simply eliminate the MAC and instead just use the IP address? It's not possible. Many other protocols also rely on the MAC address. And all low level devices are built to take care of the MAC addresses. If we want to change this, we have to change all the firmwares all the devices and all of the infrastructure which is not affordable so why not simply eliminate the ip and instead just use the mac addresses there is also a problem mac addresses are distributed randomly in the world it is difficult to create grouping based on mac addresses mac addresses are not routable also mac address is not removable from your hardware but it can be spoofed Do you know I have answered all of your questions? This is all from the today's lecture. It is possible that you are confused on some points. So please replay this video one or two times to have better understanding of the topic. Because the topics that seem easy are often difficult to explain. If you think I have tried my best to explain you about the MAC addresses then please subscribe this channel and like this video.